Welcome in to the uh, William Blunt High School pregame show brought to you by Heartland Roofing. Give Nate a call for free estimates, free inspections, and all your roofing needs. And you may need some of those roofing needs today after that hot wind out there, but we are on the air and ready to go here at William Blunt High School. I'm Stan Painter alongside Carter Bales tonight as Rob Lotz is going to set this feel a little bit under the weather. He's going to set the girls game out. He'll be, may try to give it a go in the boys game. We'll see. He is here. But Carter, um, big game tonight as this is the good guys versus the bad guys. Yeah, a little bit of uh, off school basketball. William Blunt off, Blunt County Schools in general off tonight or today. Um, and this is good. This is rounding up to be a good game. Maryville's record, not great, but like, like me and you were talking off air, it was brutal. Um, and William Blunt looking to bounce back after a tough loss against Hardin Valley on Tuesday. Yeah, William Blunt's been a little bit of a skid. As a matter of fact, they haven't won in 2014. I mean, uh, 2024, <laughs> as uh, they lost to Fulton. Let, uh, blew a big lead there. Carter let that game get away from him. I thought played pretty good. Maybe 28, 29 of 32 minutes at Heritage. Yeah. Did not come, you know, got beat by a very good Heritage team. And then just a, I think a total stinker at Hardin Valley on Tuesday night. Yeah, um, kind of fell apart on the road at Hardin Valley. But going back to that Heritage game, um, I mean, up until it was a, it was an 8 or 11-0 run by Heritage um, near the end of the game that really sealed it. But it was back and forth uh, pretty much the entire game. Looking to uh, repeat that here against a, a Maryville team that this Lady Guffs team has a really good chance of, of beating tonight. Yeah, I think if they come out and play like they did last Friday night, they, sh they should have a good chance to beat them. If they don't, if they play like they did Tuesday night or parts the second half of Fulton, uh, they will probably lose. But that's just the bottom line. As you said, Maryville 3 and 15, very unlike them coming into this. But I mean, I looked at their schedule again today, Rob or um, Carter, and I, I was kind of familiar with it. I went back and looked again. It's just been absolutely brutal. They got lost to Heritage twice. They've lost to Alcoa. They've lost to McMinn Central. They've lost to Sevier County twice. Um, they lost to Bearden the other night. Went into overtime with Bearden. So I mean, it's just brutal. I mean, it's uh, some of the top teams in East Tennessee who they play. Yeah, they definitely played some heavyweights early. Um, so uh, the the record really might not tell what kind of basketball team this is that, that's going up against the Lady Govs tonight, for sure. Well, and there's our pregame show. So uh, we'll take another, we'll take a one minute break and then we'll be back with starting lineups right here on Gov Nation Network and Voice of Champions. So, uh, 
color guard. We are back at William Blunt High School getting ready for the starting lineups as no color guard tonight, I guess because school being out today. So here is your Lawn, Lawn Butler of Knox starting lineup, the one-stop shop for all landscaping needs. You can give them a call at 865-777-1755. So Carter, you'll get those for us right there. Looks like it's going to be I got Har Harrison and Edwards, I'm sure. Uh, also Blackburn. I see Barnes, Barnes, the freshman. And Lott. Okay, yep. Not to be confused with Lott. No. <laughs> and here's William Blunt. Looks like. Liza Hicks has been starting since with some injuries, doing a good job. Taylor Rule, Charlize Scarlett, Savannah Darnell, the leading scorer, and Holly Russell, good to see her back in the starting lineup. She came back, I think, the other night at Hardin Valley, played some, so we hope she's full strength tonight. This team's still without uh, one of their biggest rebounders, yeah. uh, Allie Everett. Noticeable difference there with no Allie Everett. So, as you said, probably the biggest rebounder. Aside from Chloe Russell. Yeah. And she was starting to actually score some, too, as well. So, we'll see how the Lady Governors adjust. So, four of the five, though. Back in the starting lineup, Eliza Hicks, who has played very well in Russell's absence, stays in the lineup. Balls up, tip, grab four, and the Lady Rebels come out of there with it. As Harrison will run the point for the Lady Rebels. Over to the freshman Barnes. Barnes back out to Blackburn. Maribel will run their offense here. William Blunt straight up looks like man right now. I suspect they will play some zone as Blackburn's three-point shot is no good. Rebound by Darnell for William Blunt. Oh, Charlize. Nice shot fake. Little runner. Round no good, but there's Hicks to rebound for William Blunt and double dribbles. Yep. That's a good call. She did take a dribble and then tried to get, picked it up and took another one. So Yeah, tough luck. Got ahead of herself right there. You got to get that ball back out to someone who can drive to the lane. So Maryville on their second possession. Is. They get it in low to Lott. She can't handle the pass on the Utah cut. Goes out of bounds. Turnover for the Lady Rebels. Back-to-back -back turnovers. One on each possession, William Blunt and Maryville. Blunt brings it back across. Russell has it on the left wing, or right wing, excuse me. Dribbles back around. They're going to set up as Maryville opening with man to man as well. One minute in, no score. Russell turns in the lane, has her ball deflected. Looks like we might get a jump ball. We do. That should go to William Blunt as the Maryville Lady Rebels got the opening possession. Thank you for joining us tonight. Nice crowd already here for the girls' contest as Darnell gets in there and going up. Whoa, they called a, a jump. Yep. I thought it was a foul. Yeah, that one looked to be a little bit of a tweener. Could have called the contact, but they say she got all ball. Well, that all trip possession will go back to Maryville. So, um, pretty nice crowd setting in here already for the girls game. Right there is Darnell crashes into Barnes. No foul called there. That could have been a call of foul. Yeah, it looks to be jersey night, I believe, for uh, the student section here. Uh, like you said, pretty good crowd for the girls' game. I expect it to only get fuller as uh, oh yeah, this got a big matchup yeah, later tonight. Even though the weather is not great, they're stepped on the uh, – Jada Edwards stepped on the end line, and that's a second turnover for the Lady Rebels in three possessions. Two minutes in. We're scoreless. We are. Yeah, Ty, uh, you could probably see – 
the bottom deck there pretty full right now as Darnell gets oh, the rack, man. lays it up, no good, rebound by Maribel. Yeah, if they're going to leave the lane right there open, she needs to take it every time. Slacked off. Edwards is going to fire a three ball, no good. Too firm, but rebound by Harrison. She's going to step back three and, and in and out, and Darnell gets the rebound there. And neither team being able to buy a basket right now. Can't scratch as Russell's going to walk it across. So Hicks, or excuse me, Rule will take it up top. Gets a screen as Darnell from Hicks. Three ball in the air, missed everything, too long. Here comes Harrison wanting to run with Lady Rebels, but Stead backs it out. They're going to set it up against William Blunt's man defense, it looks like, still. And the man looking to give Maryville fits so far. As Barnes, the freshman, gets into the lane and knocks down the first shot three minutes into the contest. Maryville goes up two to zero. Rule will bring it across, actually to get it at the half line, set up to set up the William Blunt high offense. Gives to Darnell, Darnell hits to Russell, popping out. Back over to Rule. Rule reverses it to Scarlett. They get it to Darnell at the elbow. Guarded closely by Blackburn. She gets it down to Scarlett. Scarlett, I think, was going to make a bounce pass, and then Hicks went the other way. And they're going to call a foul on Hicks. So that will be the first foul of the night. Yeah, look, she really just handed it off to the defender. Trying to go for the bounce pass down the baseline. Wasn't open. I think Hicks may have cut the other way after she committed to making the one-handed bounce pass. She tried to pull it back, but she was either going to be a walk yeah. or a turnover. As Barnes gets it to the elbow. Shot wild, no good. Now they're going to get an offensive over-the-back foul. Excuse me, not offensive foul. That's going to go against Lott. Ella Lott, the senior. Maryville went with the senior Watt, Lott and Edwards. Also, junior Blackburn, freshman Barnes, sophomore Harrison. So, relatively young team. Carly Hunt, I don't see her. She plays quite a bit. I'm not sure if she's hurt or just coming off the bench now. As they do have a couple of girls not dressed out, it looks like as Hicks gets on the baseline, gets it to rule somehow. Ball's deflected out of bound by Harrison. It will stay with William Blunt. So four minutes and 30 seconds in, William Blunt yet to score. Yeah, and only one made field goal for both sides. As Hicks tries to get a lob, and Russell lost her footing and fell, and that's going to end result in a turnover. As they tried to, rule, to lob it into Russell, not sure she's going to be open anyway. No, I believe she had two guys on her. But Off regardless, it was going to be a turnover. Edwards with an air ball. Three. From the top, it goes out of bounds. And so that would go back to William Blunt. So very sluggish offensively, both teams early on. Yeah, and I would expect that to ramp up a little bit. But right now, both teams really struggling to find their footing. Maribel went with a little 2-2-1 full court press. William Blunt breaks it pretty easy to get it to Darnell. Darnell back out to Rule. Rule's going to spin, get her shot blocked. Somehow, Lott did not go out of bounds on the baseline there, was able to control it. So another turnover for William Blunt. Lott has it, gives over to Harrison. Harrison wants to penetrate. Instead, gives to Barnes, who has the only points of the night. Edwards, physical with Russell, shove off. Not being called, they are very physical in the post area. As Edwards is walking. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Just backing into her without dribbling the ball. We're going to have a substitution here. Husband's checking in for Russell. Well, I, I'm going to tell you, I think Edwards is, was was mad. Yeah, uh, she, she, was, she wasn't happy. She threw an elbow and a push, got away with. She didn't get away with the walk. It's a good job by Darnell to, to double down and got her hand on the ball to force her to walk. His husband's going to lose it at the half line. Not sure why they have her bringing it up. She walks, swats it back out, though. 
Shot no good, rebound by Rule. Rule in trouble. Tries to go through, no foul call. So as Hicks does a high dribble, no call there. Gets it to Husband on the baseline. One extra Out to pass. Scarlett, Scarlett's three ball in the air, good. And that'll be how the Lady Govs scratch. First points of the night come from Charlie Scarlett and they now have the lead. That's a party zone, your birthday specialist, Roll Arena party zone, three point shot right there by Charlie Scarlett. Harrison with it for the Lady Rebels. Hard screen set there on the inside. Edwards thought about another three. Instead's going to put it on the floor and go against Caitlin Husband. Picks her dribble up. In trouble. Needs a friend. Gets the back cutting. Barnes, no good. But right there's Lotz to lay it up and lay it in. So Ella Lotz is right there to get it. Now, a gamble here on the three-point shot, or on the press, and Darnell gets a three-point look, and she knocks it down. Another party zone three-point ball by Roll Arena, your birthday specialist. So six to four, William Blunt, with 45 seconds to go in the period. Yep, and if the Lady Govs continue to break the press, you'd like their chances, as uh, Maribel's really struggling to get back. Yeah, they gambled right there is what created that free shot, Carter, as I believe it was Barnes that went for the start. Barnes or Blackburn went for the steal. Yep. Maribel's going to hold for one shot. I'm not sure about why you would do that the first quarter. I mean, let's say they do have the arrow, I think, yes, but uh, now they're going to put it in motion. Right there's going to be a foul on Hicks, her second. Yeah. And she come in and reached over the back. So Russell's going to check in for her. For Maryville, number 34, Skoog is going to come in. Skog. Skog, yeah. Skog's going to check in for the last 13.7. They get it into Barnes. Barnes to Edwards. Ball's deflected or stolen by... She'll take this all the Darnell way. Darnell lay it up. Lay it in by Savannah. Five seconds to go. Maryville's got to hurry. Here comes Barnes. She's going to pull up from a three. No good. First period comes to a close. And after a slow start, it's been William Blunt on a 6-0 run, or excuse me, 5-0 run to lead 8-4. to four. We'll take a timeout right here at the end of one. You're watching on Gov Nation Network. Second quarter action right here. Hold the line. That's what the Toto song played between quarters. That's what William Blunt needs to do right here. Eight to four. They lead this game after a slow start. They have the ball. Scarlett gives to Rule. Rule as Russell has checked back in for William Blunt. Caitlin Husband steps back behind the arc. And this is a Murphy Bobcat. Three-point ball, your extra effort excavator, Murphy Bobcat. So that'll be their second quarter sponsor. And so right now, Carter, three three balls for the Lady uh, Governors. Yeah, three of the four field goals made have been three balls. Almost a turnover there. By the Lady Rivers. There's, could have been an offensive foul. Was not nothing called. A shot this time by Skog, who had checked in. Misses. Rebound by Darnell. In front court. Gives over to Scarlett. She is going to draw a foul. That and will be on Skog. And that's the first foul whistle against the Lady Rebels. Second. Second foul, okay. First foul of the second quarter. Yeah, you're right. I forgot. Uh, um, Lot came over the back, right? Yes. As Darnell gets it, makes a nice move. Oh, it gets blocked, though, by Barnes. Barnes with a great rejection on Darnell as she was driving for the layup. Lot has it. Gives it over to Barnes. Barnes pulls up in the lane. Good. 
tell you what, Rob, uh, Carter, she looks pretty good. She's a freshman. Yeah, a uh, pretty good shot. Looks really fluid with the ball in her hands. And uh, she's, dri she's driven into the lane and pulled up right there a couple times. She's got four of her six points, doesn't she? Yes. Here comes a wide open three by husband. No good, short. But the long rebound comes out to Taylor Rule. Man, if that one would have went down. Yeah. That'd have been big. Good looking shot. It was right on. It was just a little short. Russell penetrates in, kicks it back out. Scarlett's going to try a three. Another one that's short, hits the front of the rim, and then back off. This time, Marimal rebounds. Harrison's going to go all the way to the right, draw the foul. Shot is no good, but she does draw a foul. Foul is going to be on Rule. That'll be her first. Two coming here. She wasn't the act of shooting. She knocks the first toss down. Very good free throw shooter, it's Harrison. Two for two from the line. Lead cut down to three. Blunt breaks the press into front court. Maribel will fall back into their man-to-man -man defense. Russell's just gonna pull her way in. One-handed shot, no good. Then she picks up a foul on the rebound. Nice move. But she just went straight in, laid it off the glass. And that was rebounded by Maribel. Then Chloe picks up the foul. Is that her first? It is her first. Team second. Now it looks like that Blunt is maybe, in, yeah, they're in a 2-3 zone. So Jason Callenberg went to a 2-3 zone out of the timeout. So he'll see how Maribel attacks it. Harrison misses it. But Maribel rebounds it. That'll be key, Carter, in the zone as William Blunt's able to build the, the rebound. If you yeah. remember, I think Blunt played quite a bit of zone last year, and Maribel struggled with it. Yeah, the only problem is harder the rebound out of the zone, and yeah. William Blunt struggles rebounding as it is. They'll get the rebound here, though, husband. It's Skog fired up a three that was no good also. So I like the zone because I know it gave Maribel problems last year in which a game that William Blunt should have won yeah. had a 10-point lead late and got beaten overtime. Mar Maribel not really a very good three-point shoot shooting team either. So and that's usually what you'll find open. Darnell spins, loses the ball, but picked up by Kia, who's checked in. She gives it to Scar Scarlett, three-point shot, no good. Darnell with the tip out, great tip out by Darnell. She thought about a three, gives it back to Scarlett. Scarlett's gonna get it into Husband. Husband's gonna make, try to make the extra pass that was deflected. Just a little weak with it, a little bit quicker, she gets it there. Here comes Harrison all the way in. She goes up, loses the ball out of bounds, off her knee. That's a turnover. Somebody deflected it in there, but then it hit off her knee. Rule checks in for Russell here. Lott, I believe, has checked in for the Lady Rebels. And Maribel is going to come out of the press at this point, anyway. They back off. Darnell gets it. Darnell almost walks, and she turns it over as Harrison gets it. And they get it to Blackburn for a three. No good. Rebound in there by Lott. Gets it. Shot no good. Again, rebound this time by William Blunt. So Maribel still struggling from the field, as is William Blunt. Scarlett penetrates baseline, gives it out to Husband, back to Scarlett. Scarlett's going to fire up another three ball. Hits the rim twice, the back, the front, the off. So no good. Harrison in front court for the Lady Rebels. 3.30 to go here in the half. In a low-scoring game, 11-8. There's a steal by Husband. Gives it to Kidd. Now, once again, the zone giving the Lady Rebels some fits yeah, on the offensive side. Yeah, somebody deflected it. If the ball goes into the post area, Kidd thought about a layup. Oh, good pass. Gives it to Husband. Beautiful assist. Maribel wants a timeout. Let's take one with them. This is a Bonner Burger timeout, home of the two for $9. One fourth, one quarter pound with cheese. Timeout on your court, William Blunt, 13. Maribel, eight.
back. Action back here at William Blunt, the Marv. After the Bottleburger timeout by Maryville, they down 13 to eight. I watched them closely and I think Coach Otto was drawing up how she wanted to attack the zone. Jada Edwards fired a three. That's not the way I think that you attack the zone is put five out and, and shoot three. Unless you're really good shooting three point team. 2.47 to go, 13 to eight to score. Kid to Scarlett. Penetrates in, shoots it up, no shot, no uh, shot, no good. Maryville wants to run, and they do. They get Riley Barnes down for the layup. It's good. So Barnes with six yep. of Maryville's 10 here. Yeah, for a it, freshman, she's looked really good. Rule looks to penetrate and still gives out the husband. Maryville played man-to-man, -man, played pretty much that the full time. Here comes Darnell. She's going to try to penetrate and lose it out of bounds. I like that idea because um, Carter, they're spreading out and attack, and then you can kick kick out because Maryville, I mean, they're playing this standard man defense, and you're going to have some open looks because I think Darnell can beat her man every time. Yeah, she really can, and if it's not there, all she has to do is kick it out to a wide-open shooter. As Lotz gets it under low, gets her shot blocked, gets it back, puts it up, and draws a foul, so she has a chance for the three-point play. The old-fashioned way. The facts, the foul, excuse me, is going to be on Darnell. That's the third team foul. Lots looking for the old-fashioned three-point play. And she'll hammer it. So that three-pointer brought to you by M M uh, Murphy Bobcat. Russell checks back in here for the Lady Gov. She'll come in for Kid. So with a buck 54 to go here in the half, we're knotted at 13. In a very low scoring game. Scarlett, up top, gives the husband. William Blunt being very patient on offense. Darnell, there's the penetration. Kicks it out to Rule. Rules looks to Scarlett. William Blunt will reset. That's all they have to do. They switch it up top. I think she needs to attack. Yep. Oh, good block there. And then there is a push as Lott. I, I thought maybe Harrison might have got with the body on the shot. They didn't call that, but and they did call that. So that will be, is that Lott second? That will be Lott second. She's coming out as Skog was going to check back in for her. Nowhere near shooting as that's only two team fouls on Maryville with a minute 10 to go. Scarlett over to Russell, back to Darnell. Russell's going to penetrate. Oh, nice back pass. cut to Rule oh, who man. misses a layup, gets her own rebound, kicks it out to Scarlett for a three ball. Good! The Murphy Bobcat, your extra effort, excavator, three ball by Charlize, I believe that's the fourth for the Lady Governor so yep. far. Her second of the first half. So 40 seconds to go, blown up by three, 16-13. Maryville passing it around the perimeter, gets it in. Now they kick it down in the corner. Edwards is going to fire a three ball. No good. Rebound by Darnell. Exactly what you want. One shot and done. And Maryville yet to hit a three-pointer tonight. They put up quite a few. Blunt can hold it right here with 20 seconds, 15 seconds. That's looks like what they're going to do is Russell dribbles and then a timeout. Jason Kallenberg is going to call a 30, I think, 12.5 to go. This timeout brought to you by Trinity Chiropractic, where your life forces, when your life forces get you started. We're trying to read Rob's Rob chicken scratch here. here. Yeah. But it is Trinity Chiropractor timeout. We'll keep it right here, 30 seconds to go, as William Blunt leads by three. Carter, I can't see the table. Who has the arrow? Uh, possession is in favor of uh, the Lady Rebels, so okay. barring anything here, they will get the ball to start the second half. Well, 12.5, I still like the idea of holding it for one. Oh, I would agree. And then... That way you're guaranteed to go in with the lead yes. at the half. Yes. 
So Maverick is going to trap out of it. Good job by Chloe Russell going through it, but then a steal. Here comes Maryville. They get it to Harrison, lay it up, lay it in. And the half will come to a close. Oh, actually, Maryville gets a steal at the buzzer, but the shot is no good. Would not have counted anyway. And Maryville cuts the lead, Carter, to, to one. William Blunt leads at the end of the half, 16 to 15. We'll take a two-minute break. We'll be back with our halftime facilities festivities here on Gov Nation Network and Voice of Champions. Halftime show here at William Blunt High School. You see the William Blunt dance team under the direction of Amber Young performing. This is the Heartland Roofing Halftime Show brought to you by Heartland Roofing. Give Nate a call for any free inspection, any free estimates. You may need an estimate and an, you may need an inspection too. It's some high winds in the area this afternoon. Some rain, gonna get cold. And Carter, the shooting's been cold for both teams here as we switch to Stats with Stan, brought to you by Tim Tipton Realty. Thank Tim for being our sponsor here for Halftime Statistics. And he's a, a great realtor, been in the business a long time. He can meet all your needs there. So you, you Carter, have their halftime scoring. Yep, first quarter uh, combined 12 points between both teams. Uh, pretty cold out the gate. Warmed up a little bit though. Only three girls scratching a piece for each team. We're gonna go ahead and start with the Lady Govs. Their leading scorer so far tonight Charlie Scarlett, two three balls with six points. And then we've got two girls with five, that being Caitlin Husband and Savannah Darnell. Moving on to the Lady Rebels, their leading scorer tonight, the freshman Riley Barnes behind her, Ella Lott with five, and Zoe Harrison with four. Two of those coming on free throw shots. That's your uh, score at halftime, 16 to 15. Once again, that was Stats with Stan, brought to you by Tim Tipton. Need a realtor? Make sure to give Tim a call. His numbers are there on the screen. All right, thank you, Carter. And once again, William Blunt leads this game 16 to 15 at the half. And we're going to go upstairs to Scott Cup. He's got a female. Who's that? Am I Carter? That uh, looks to be uh, Skyler McCarter, I, I think. I think that's who he said, yeah. So this is, if you're not familiar with this, is feed or greed. He said greed. I think it's up to, is it 250 or 350 dollars? Maybe now? 300. I think 350 maybe, uh, Carter. But so she gets three shots here. The money goes to her. She's going with the bounce. Oh, Boy, I tell you what, that was close. Yeah. If Need she, a little more air on it. Yeah, or a little bit closer to the rim. This one looks pretty good. Oh, that was just to the, now that had the right bounce. Yeah. It was just a little bit to the right. Here's her third and final shot. 
Looks good where it's bouncing on a shot. Just a little short on that one, so. That'll roll over next Friday night. We'll be back here when the West Rebels come. So we'll see what Scott Cup's got up his sleeve then or how much money he's gonna be willing to give away. I'll tell you, Carter, as this gets higher, this jackpot gets higher and higher, I'm not sure a lot of people are gonna feed. I, I wouldn't feed, personally. You could, you could take the greed yourself yeah. and then go buy Chick-fil-A and feed and still come out with money. Yeah, I mean, I think he said it's up to $350 yeah. going into Friday, so. We'll see what they do. Might end up having a friend of the student section, but I would assume you're going to see a lot of greed coming up within the next few weeks. With that, we're going to take a timeout right here, a two-minute break, and we'll be back with second-half action right here on Gov Nation Network and AM 1470 Voice of Champions. For the Alabama Crimson back at, Tide. Back at William Blunt High School, Marvin L. Boring Gymnasium, Bill Wallace Court. And it's about me getting cold outside, but it's really warm in here. I'm feeling, feeling the heat on right now, Carter. Hopefully, Carter, the scoring picks up as well. Yeah, we're going to need a little more heat on the court, um, <laughs> at least on William Blunt's side. Yeah. Uh, the 16 to 15 really feels like this league can be extended with the amount of open shots that William Blunt has had. Just haven't really hit on a couple of them. Right. So, uh, as we, we look at it, usually look at our area scoreboard, there's not much going on tonight. Alcoa played Fulton last night. Their boys lost, their girls won. Heritage has an open date tonight. And then post all the Mo Knox County schools can't or postponed their games tonight. So, a lot of playing tomorrow. I know the big one tomorrow night, I think, is uh, Farragut at Bearden. Okay. And then West at Hardin Valley. Yeah, so, those are two the district game. games. If we look at the district standings in the girls' contest, or the girls' side of it, you've got three teams that are 2-0 and o and then three teams that are 0-2. But something's going to give tonight because William Blunt and Maryville are two of those 0-2 teams. So somebody's going to get in the win column. Then to, and over the boys' side, Carter, I look up top, somebody's going to be in first place tonight by themselves. Yeah. After after the night's over. Yeah, tied up. William Blunt and Maryville, both two and zero in the region. Or dis is it district or district, region district basketball? District basketball. District and basketball. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely something you want to be on top of because that puts you ahead of everybody else. Everybody else has at least one. Farragut and West are one and one. Bearden, surprisingly zero and two. Hardin Valley boys also zero and two. As William Blunt escaped. Over there the other night, 67-66 was the final. Yeah, after a pretty 
poor first quarter shooting, uh, they, which has really been the case all year for the, the boys team. Yeah. Uh, they turned it on and ended up winning that game. I, I know it was like a two-possession game, and then Hardin Valley threw up a prayer or something right near the end to cut it to one. But uh, yeah, they hit a they hit a, uh, a little more than half side shot. Yeah, uh, I mean it was sixty six, it was sixty six sixty three. Grady hits one out of two, pretty much ices the game with three point nine. They throw it in and hit a half court shot, and that's what the, the margin was one point sixty seven sixty six. So still very important shot that yeah. Grady Grady hit, who was the leading scorer third for twenty eight points that night. Yep, to ice it, adios it, as yep. we would say. As Maryville gets a shot, lots a wild shot in the rain, missed everything, but right to Edward. Edwards off the rebound, and then Maryville goes up 17 16 here in the early third period. Yeah, really quick offense to start. I mean, less than 30 seconds in, we see the first shot go down. It's something we didn't see earlier. They hit Darnell on the back cut. She chose not to go up with it, instead walks it out, comes back in, goes up, gets her shot blocked by Blackburn, but stolen by Charlize. Lay it up, lay it in by Savannah. William Blunt regains the lead, 18-17. That gives the Van Savannah, excuse me, seven on the night. And Blunt with another steal off the press. Russell with it, gives it to Rule. Here comes a three, I thought a three ball by Scarlett. Still, she gives it over to Russell. Russell's gonna fire from three. No good, bounces around off Hicks and, and another player, but Maribel comes out of there with it, so. I think that Chloe backed up and she backed up behind the orange line. And you know, I don't think she's got her feet step right there. Yeah, it didn't look like a comfortable shot. That looked like a comfortable shot by Barnes. Riley Barnes. So they found a soft spot in the zone and that's where they attack it. So Blunt will not, I don't think they can stay in that zone if they continue to attack there. I, I, I wondered why they never attacked there last year, nor the first half this year of tonight, but now they've drawn something up to pack it in the high post area. And that gives Barnes eight. Darnell's going to drive, put up a shot no good. Underneath, hits the bottom of the rim going up, and a rebound for the Lady Rebels. So Blunt staying in the zone. Maryville gets it to Harrison. Now Russell comes up to defend that high post a little bit. But that's what you got to do to adjust. There's the shot in. Kicks it back out to Blackburn. She doesn't have a good look, so they're going to reset is the Maryville Lady Rebels. And Edwards is going to fire a three ball that's good. That's our first made three ball of the night. Comes from Jada Edwards. She's now got five, was scoreless in the first half. And, and you that, don't want her to heat up. No. And that's Maryville's biggest lead of the night, 22-18, four points. Here goes Russell. Over to Scarlett. Scarlett's going to penetrate in, kick it out to Darnell. He's going to go all the way, lay it up, lay it in. So Savannah gets a crease, and the key to her, Carter, is that she can turn on that angle. A lot of times she goes in flat, and she can't hit that shot. She's able to turn there. Quick shot by Edwards, no good. Rebound by Darnell. So here comes Russell back. They get it in the front court. Hicks was open. Scarlett didn't see her in time. Instead, the extra pass to Rule. They're going to run it back out to William Blunt against the man-to-man -man of Maryville. Here goes Russell in. Russell goes up, draws a foul, and I believe that may be Lott's third. I believe they are going to call this on Lott. It will be her third. So that'll send Chloe Russell to the line, looking to scratch tonight. Pretty solid free throw shooter. As she cans the first. Carter Bales almost did the announcer jeans. I uh, almost did. She she was able to withstand it. Bounces it in. Skog checks in here for Lot. And Russell misses the second. One for two from the line, but a rebound by Darnell. And she goes it up over Barnes. No shot, no good. So Maribel still leads by one. And then here comes Fire, a quick three by Blackburn, and she drains it. Addie Blackburn, is that her first points of the night? It is. Second three ball of the night for the Lady Rebels. So they come out of the halftime firing, have the Lady Rebels. Here comes Darnell spinning, and they're right there. Ball's deflected. Whoa! I thought Jada deflected that. I guess not. 
Well, she was looking to draw contact, yeah. but there. Substitution, Caitlin Husband checking in or not. Never mind. Changed her mind, I suppose. I don't think they're going to let her in. The ball was already yeah. given to, and so I think they didn't let her in, which is the right call because they had already administered the ball. In the yeah, it's the right call. Ball's deflected up top. But there was a difference right there. Savannah was unable to make that turn. Foul or no foul, that shot wasn't going in. Nope. As they get it in low, and Edwards misses it, goes back up, draws a foul this time. We'll see if it's on Darnell or Rule. It's going to be on Rule. That'll be her second. Team second. Or first, excuse me, team's first. Got ahead of myself. Blunt may need a timeout here in just a second. As Darnell is talking to the official, I'm sure about that last offensive possession. I said William Blunt may need a timeout just because they just don't need to let this get away from them here in the third quarter. They're down five. Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea. And they're struggling offensively. Jada Edwards, two for two from the line. All of her points coming in the second half. She's got seven. So they go up 27-21. As Rule picks her dribble up, it's yeah. a bad spot, but she gets it down low to Husband. Husband goes up, draws a foul. Two shots coming from Caitlin. That foul's going to be on Skog or Scoob. I don't know. Tyler said Scoob. I guess Tyler knows. So yeah. I guess it is double O. I think we've called her Skog in the past. But the junior husband cans the first free throw. The sophomore husband makes that down. As you said, Carter pulls us with him blunt with him five. Second one rolls out, one for two. So halfway through the third period, Blunt down by five. Blackburn catches it into the high post, gives it to Barnes. Barnes bats out to Blackburn. Blackburn for another three, no good. But rebound to Scoog. Lay it up, lay it in. Boxed out everybody but Scoog. Yeah, it was an air ball. Yep. And I was seeing, you know, air balls are tough to, to, to get rebounds on because you don't know where they're going. I mean, you do know where they're going. The offense does. Timeout, we're going to tap two. Jason Kallenberg's got needs a timeout. We're going to take one with him. This is a Bowen door making your best first impression timeout. Take a 60 second break on Governor. We are back after the timeout, the Bowen Door timeout. William Blunt down seven. That was a good timeout by Jason Kallenberg. Is, he needs offense. He needs looks. He's not gotten a lot of good looks here in the second half. Has scored, I think, six points. 16-15, wasn't it, with the half. So Maribel's outscored the Lady Rebels 14-6 here in the third period. Rule gives over to Russell. Russell back to Rule. Kick it up top. You got oh. Well, they get it down to Russell. Russell's going to go up and draw a foul. This one will go against Barnes, I think. Yep. Will be. That's her first. Team second, I believe. Third. Team third. Yeah. Both both teams. No, wait a minute. William Blunt's only committed one. That period messes me up right there next to the fouls. Every time. But she'll nail the first free throw. William Blunt needs every point right here they can get as they're down six with 2.41 to go in the third. Two for two from the line this time is Chloe Russell. So All five. of her points coming from the free throw strike. 29-24 your score. As Maribel gets into front court, looks like Blunt may have went back to man-to-man -to -man now. 
after this timeout. Baseline drive by Barnes. She kicks it out to Harrison. Harrison three ball, no good. Rebound by Darnell. Darnell in open court. All the way. All the way. Ball's going to be deflected by Barnes. Darnell wanted the foul right there, but I think that was a pretty clean block from my angle. Yeah, look clean up here. So, right call by the official. It's William Blunt will pass in from the baseline. And they throw it away. Can't have that. No. Unforced turnover right there. Because they just couldn't get the pass in cleanly. 29-24, your score. In favor of the Lady Rebels. William Blunt led most of the first half. Led by one at the half, but it's been pretty much all Maryville here in the third. Blackburn with another three-pointer, no good. Rebound by Darnell, good box out right there by Darnell. She wants to get it to Husband in the corner. Back out to Darnell. Over to Rule. Coach Kallenberg trying to set up something on offense. And Blunt almost turns it, actually they does will. turn it over again. Tried to skip it over the Charlie Scarlet, wasn't there. Pass lane was full. So another unforced turnover. Deep free ball here by Skoog, and she drains it. She's got five now on the night. That was deep. Not a lot, not a lot of ways to defend that. No. Blunt's down their biggest eight. If they get it from Rule, Rule lays up no good. Missed everything. So quick shot right there. It's a good looking shot, but it just she put it, shot it too hard. Yeah, and that's what that's the shot you want inside. Got ahead of herself, put too much on it. Miss Harrison's gonna set it up. I believe Maribel may hold for one here with 30 seconds to go. Yeah, up eight, you might as well. Scarlet flicks it out of bounds. And here comes Kidd. Here comes Hicks in for William Blunt. Yep, they'll come in for Scarlet and Russell. As the Lady Rebs pass it into the backcourt and it'll be walked across. 20 seconds to go. Harrison up top. Just dribbling out time. They give to Barnes. Barnes going to go all the way to the lays it up and in. One down by 10. They need to hurry. Darnell. She could get to the right. She can get a shot off. Instead gets Good it to pass. Hicks who lays it up and in. There we go. At the buzzer. And so William Blunt with the layup cuts it to eight. So basically just traded baskets and that was good for the Lady Governors. But they find themselves down 34 26 at the end of three. You're watching on Gov Nation Network and listening on Voice of Champions. Fourth quarter action here, William Blunt's basketball. And they are in an eight point hole. Still doable. Yeah, really a tough offensive quarter for the Lady Govs. Tough defensive quarter as well. Yeah. They yeah. gave up a lot of points. 19 to 10, William Blunt got outscored. They hit the back cutting Darnell who throws it up hard on the backboard. Hicks with the rebound and gets the foul. So Eliza will get two shots. Yeah, that one's on Riley Barnes. That'll be her second. First team foul of the half. 
So good job by Hicks. I think they got what they wanted right there. Darnell has put it up too, too hard. Hicks' first shot is short. She gets a second. William Blunt, student section. Completely full now, Carter. Second shot, no good either. The same thing, short. Rebound by Maribel. Unfortunately for that William Blunt student section, they haven't had much to cheer about in the second half here. William Blunt hit four threes in the first. There's Edwards with another, this one's short. Goes out to Kidd. Kidd in front court, gonna set it up for William Blunt. She gives off to Scarlett, Scarlett over to Darnell. Darnell wants to penetrate. Kicks it back out to Kidd. Darnell looking for that seam to turn the corner. Gets it deflected out of her hands, but right to Charlize. Scarlett's gonna go, lay it up, no good. Rebound by Hicks, that's three offensive boards in the last couple of minutes of playing time here for William Blunt, for, for Eliza. And then a foul called on Skoog. That'll be her third, team wow. second. And the Lady Rebels really turned it up on the defensive side here in the second half on yep. the Lady Govs. It's Chloe Russell gets it, gets over to, it gets, ends up with Darnell on the right wing. She's going to penetrate. Here comes Kidd with a big three ball, no good. Hicks almost gets around for another one. As Hicks has been all over the offensive board for William Blunt. Now, definitely one of the most athletic girls on the floor. I'd say in general with both, with all 10 out there. As we are filling up quickly up here, uh, Carter. A lot of people behind us, a lot of people in front of us at the Anticipating top. Anticipating a good boys contest. It's been a good girls game. Skog shoots an air ball, but right there is Lott. I mean, it's almost like it's a pass. It's twice that's happened. Yeah. I don't think it goes in the stat sheet as no. an assist, but it might as well. And that's there's a deep three, ball. three by Darnell. And that was a blunt partnership with three ball by Savannah where careers and education come together. Her first points of the fourth quarter. She's got a little, or 12, excuse me. As the ball goes out of bounds, I think they touched last by William Blunt. I thought Maribel tried to save it and touched it, but I guess they said it was already out. 5.50 to go, seven point game. As Lott just runs right over Russell and picks up an offensive foul. That's her fourth, third team foul. And we're gonna get a timeout by Taylor Otto. And this one will be a full timeout. And that'll be an East Tennessee Insurers, your local independent insurance agency timeout. Timeout, William Blunt down by seven, don't go anywhere. Back at the bar, Carter, you just made it a good observation as we was coming back on the air about Rob Lotz. Yeah, he's uh, he looks like he's ready to go. <laughs> for, <laughs> he, for... He's supposed to be resting his voice. He's been running his mouth the whole time down there in the crowd. So there's a that's got to be, be out of bounds. Yeah, Russell, her entire arm in the blue. So but that here's will the be thing. a turnover. I don't know, maybe the Maribel girl wasn't out of bounds, but she had her hand on the ball too. Would yeah. that not be a jump ball? But Because they were simultaneous out together, I don't know. Yeah. But they called it out of bounds on Chloe. As Blunt tried to lob it in. So Maribel's possession. They get it to Edwards in the block, away from the blocks. Chloe's gonna defend her. They give it to... Turnover. Yeah, as Barnes couldn't handle the pass back, Tried to save it and throws it back out of bounds on the sideline. So that is a turnover for the Lady Rebels. So 
blunt dodge to bullet on that one as well. They get the ball back just with a few seconds burnt. Yeah, and this is a possession where you really need to cut into this lead. Yes, I think, Rob, or Carter, because William Blunt, I don't think tonight, anyway, they're not on the... And that's what you need to do. It's Darnell. Blew it. Had space inside. Fighting for that's a board, gonna a and that's going to be a jump. Yep. It'll go to Maribel. I just don't think William Blunt has the offense tonight, for whatever reason, to make a big run. And so, you know, you're not going to see like a 12-0 run or anything. So that's why these, every possession is so important here. Yep. You know, you might see a 10 to 2 run or 10 to 4 run to cut it. Haven't seen a whole lot of defense turned into offense, that's for sure. Not tonight. Taylor Rule set to check back in here for the Lady Govs, the next stop of play. And Maryville being very patient on offense, as they should, with four minutes to go. They're not really looking, they're, they're acting like they're going to shoot it, but I don't think they're really looking to shoot it. No, they're, they're going to hold it as long as they can. And right there, be another turn it over. As Harrison kicks it out, the ball is deflected. Somebody had their hand on it, but it was touched last by Harrison. So, 4-11, I think that timeout by Taylor Otto was to say we want to get a layup. It's the only time we're going to look to score. Yeah, and that could lead. That's a deep three by Charlize. Way short air ball and a turnover. So Blunt just can't take advantage when they get the turnovers. Four minutes to go. So here comes Maribel. You know, and it, it, if they bleed another 30 seconds off the clock here, you know, it's kind of like they turned this into a five-minute offense. Yep. And Blunt can't take, take advantage of it. Barnes gets it, and an offensive foul on Barnes. That's the second that... Chloe is drawn. That'll be Barnes' third. Team fourth. So we're one away from the bonus. So 3.45 to go. Blunt with another opportunity to cut it. This time they get the back cutting. Darnell, who can't get it to go, gets her own rebound, kicks it out. Rule to Russell, to Scar uh, Scarlett, to Darnell. Trying to draw up. contact again, no she call. She just can't get a call. No. Nope. As, and I'm not sure, I'm not saying they should be calls, but nope. she's just been a lot of contact on her. She's not able to do it with yeah. 3.20 to go. And Darnell, who usually lives at the line, is yet to go there tonight. So I think this is four possessions in a row that Maribel's had a chance to build, you know, this lead. But William Blunt, on the other end, hadn't been able to take care of it, or to take advantage of it either. Yep. Uh, really struggling, looking like so, the first quarter again. Neither team really scoring. And now we're under three minutes to go. Yeah. So Blunt's going to come out, and they're going to double team. They're going to get a steal. Husband picks it up, gives it over to Scarlett. William Blunt has to have points on every possession if they want to win this game. Yep, two and a half remaining. Jason Kallenberg barking out signals. Russell gets it under low. And they're going to call an offensive Wipe it foul. Off. Offensive foul. That's Russell's second, team first. And as the clock is continuing to tick down, I don't know if one team foul is something that's necessarily a good thing. You're going to want to start stopping it and getting them to the free throw. That's our first. That is our first yeah. team foul. Wow. Edwards, double team. Kicks it back out. Blackburn over to Harrison. Maribel's not going to shoot it. No, they're going to hold for an open layup. Which is the right call. The only problem is if you turn it over, of course, yeah. William Blunt necessarily, or hasn't necessarily done anything to cut into the lead. Right. They've turned it over or missed five straight times, but Blunt's yet to make it uh, to cut into it. Under two minutes to go double team is Blackburn. And now you're going to have to start fouling. And actually a good timeout here by Otto, Taylor Otto. 30 second break. We'll take one with them on Gov Nation Network and AM 1470.
Back at William Blunt High School, Carter just pointed out to me in six minutes of play in the fourth quarter, there's a grand total of five points been scored between both teams. Two by Maribel, three by William Blunt. William Blunt looking to trap the double team here. Partly it is due to Maribel's keeping the basketball, you know, just trying to run the clock out with a minute 30 to go. A really good move there by Harrison to get yeah. back into the front court. Maribel's doing a really good job of keeping the ball away from William, William Blunt's going to foul. Yep. Charlize is going to foul there. That'll be her first, team second. The problem with that is just what you said, team second. Yeah. They got to do it two more times before they get Maribel to the line. Two team fouls is great unless you're behind. Exactly. Barnes. That'll be a two. And it'll be a miss. And there is a rebound by Lott. And then another foul. And then there's going to be an intentional. An intentional. On Scarlett. So two shots in the ball coming right here. As we have a replay on that, guys. I don't know. I didn't. I believe she did shove her. Okay. Well, she, got, she didn't make it. I thought it, I thought Lott shoved off to to get the, uh, the rebound. And so I think maybe out of frustration, here we go on the rebound. So Blackburn is yeah. two for two here. It was, I mean, yeah. You don't see a whole lot of intentional fouls called. No. I know there was one last year for the boys game that uh, upset a lot of people yeah. in the crowd. I remember, I don't remember what game that was. I know it was a district game. Was it Hardin Valley last year, maybe here? I don't remember. I always thought it was early on, maybe South Door. Okay. But Lott gets the rebound, draws the foul with 105. Well, She'll go to the line, two shots. Darnell with the foul there. That's the fourth team foul. So that'll send Lott to the line. So far with seven, make it eight on the first free toss. They have shot free throws really well, haven't they? And yes, they, missed, they, um, they have not missed tonight. Yeah. Husband checks in for Hicks here, going with a little bit of size and shooting. And, Mer and William Blunt's not got to the line much. No. And the times they have, they've gone one for two almost every time. Two for two from the line is Lott. 105 to go. Blunt will race down and try to get, they got to look for three now. Uh, too much time running off the clock here. You got to get something up. Rule's going to penetrate, put it up. Shot no good, rebound by Maryville. Adios. It's that adios is brought to you by the lawn doctor. The lawn butler, excuse me, of Knoxville. And that'll be a two-shot foul coming here on as Russell picked that one up. So That's Blunt, her third. Blunt's going to drop to 0-3 in the district. Maryville will pick up their first district win. Blackburn's going back to the line for another two. Cans this one. And Maryville stays perfect from the line. Jinxed them. But they got the rebound and then turned it over. The 39.8 really doesn't matter here. Nope. So that was their first miss from the line as they were... Eight for nine before that one. Scarlett's going to get a three ball off. No good. Knocked Chipped out of bounds, bounds by Rule. Yep. 27.5, don't foul. Well, After 11. the game, we'll come up with stats with Stan. It'll be Carter doing that for you. Brought to you by Tim Tipton. We'll have the Heartland Roofing postgame report. And then we'll have the Heartland Roofing pregame. Boys will turn our attention to that. So as Maribel passes up a back uh, a layup there with 10 seconds to go. They're going to run it out. Final score is going to be 41 to 29 with six seconds to go. So Blunt will drop to 0-3, 9-12 overall. Maribel picks up their fourth win of the season and their first in the district. Final score is 41-29 in favor of Maribel. Take a two-minute break and we'll be back with the post-game show.
you are back for the post game show here, Heartland Roofing post game show brought to you by Heartland Roofing. Give Nathan a call at 865-323-5933 for a free estimate or a free inspection. We'll go right straight to Stats and Stand, brought to you by Tim Tipton, Tim Tipton Realty. Carter, you have the stats, the final statistics in the girls' contest. Thanks, Stan. We'll go ahead and start with the victorious Lady Rebs. Their leading scorer tonight, Riley Barnes with 10. Behind her, Ella Lott with 9. One girl with 6, that being Addie Blackburn. One girl with 7, that being Jada Edwards. And we've got uh, Scoob with 5 and Zoe Harrison with 4. Now the Lady Govs, their leading scorer tonight, Savannah Darnell with 12. Behind her, two girls with six, that being Charlie Scarlett and Caitlin Husband. One girl with three, that being Chloe Russell. And then Eliza Hicks rounds it off with two, that being your final score, 41 to 29. Once again, Stat with Sam, we're brought to you by Tim Tipton. Need a realtor? Make sure to give Tim a call. His numbers are there on the screen. And we'll move into our post-game interview as we have been joined by head coach Jason Kallenberg. Remind you, this is Heartland Roofing courtside interview. Coach had a one-point lead at the half, and this, things just didn't go your way the second half at all. Nope, not at all. And if you'd have told me that we held two of their kids that were obviously focal points for us to what we held them to, I'd have told you that outcome might have been different. But obviously, we struggled to find ways to get things done. Yeah. Yeah, it really hurts you. The, I mean, the second half, I didn't feel like your offense was very fluid. Nope. Um, just couldn't get the, sh the looks that you needed. But of course, some of that, the, the credit them. They, they did a good job defensively and so forth. But I, I felt like you guys were in trouble then when you got down eight because just from what I saw earlier in the game, you just didn't have the offense to make a big run yeah. uh, in at them. And then I think I counted four or five possessions where you got stops down here in the fourth quarter but you weren't able to cut into the lead. It seemed like it was 36-29 forever. Right. Now, I mean, you know, and I'm sure they they missed some too, but I just I, I sit back and think of how many just point-blank shots we miss at the rim. Um, you know, and yeah, I don't know. We're, we're struggling to score right now. I mean, we're not healthy, but there's not an excuse. Obviously, I'm just not doing a very good job, and we've got to get some stuff figured out. But, yeah, scoring here lately is has been an issue for us. Um, I don't know. Yeah, so, uh, well, you know, uh, did see a couple bright spots in there. In the first half, you did your score, you, you hit the four or three balls, so you were hitting that, but I just don't think you got a lot of good looks in the second half on the three-point shot. We didn't. I think that, you know, we'd, we'd, set, we'd sit and hold it and then let them readjust, and, you know, we were just too slow offensively, and, you know, we ran we ran some good actions, but when you're running actions as slow as we're running them, I mean, you're pretty easy to guard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you coming up. I know Absolutely. it was a frustrating night, and uh, you know, because it feels like a game. Maybe you all had an opportunity to win here and, and so forth, and uh, didn't get it. And, but you get another crack at them and uh, get right back in it next week. I think you've got Bearden and West next week. So we'll be back here on Gov Nation Network next Friday night at West. As West comes over and, uh, you know, early January, still mid-January, I should say. So really doesn't matter till about a month right from now. Yeah. So you just keep working at it, Coach. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you for Thank coming. Thank you all. Up. Absolutely. With that, we'll take another two-minute break, and we'll be back right here on Gov Nation Network.
All right, back here in between games. It's now time for the boys as the girls fall by 12 points. And what a matchup here. One of the most anticipated matchups in East Tennessee and really across the state stand. William Blunt 17 and three, Maryville 13 and five, but really has played a tough schedule. Yeah, they have, just like the girls teams has. Uh, Maryville boys, Robbie, and we talked about this. Of course, uh, you weren't up here with us in the first half, but uh, somebody is gonna come out of these district standings with a first place lead tonight. And, and, and pretty good uh, lead because Tuesday night, Farragut beat uh, West. West. So they, they come in, Farragut and West are one and one. Bearden already has two losses, one of those to Maryville. Right. The other one to West, Hardin Valley's 0-2, as they've lost to Maryville and William Blunt. And so William Blunt and Maryville both 2-0. And, uh, you know, like I said, Mar like you said, Robbie, Maryville's playing well. As they come into this game, of course, William Blunt's playing well, too. They're 17-3. and three. So, you know, yeah. I think uh, a lot of times people talk to William Blunt people, and they kind of – feel like the Sweet Blunt team should just go out there and beat everybody by 20. Right. And that's not going to happen no. in this district because from top to bottom. It's probably the best most, or second best in the state. It is the most competitive. I mean, you know, usually you come in and I, every year, Robbie, you even look at the girls district. I can tell you, you know, there's some separation in there. I mean, the girls side of the district, you know, West is going to finish last. Beard right. is going to win it. So, but. I can't tell you who's going to finish first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth in this district. Uh, yeah. two, two games in. Yeah, it's wide open still. So um, we'll see there. Uh, you know, this will be a very good contest matchup as um, we get going here tonight. Yeah, Maryville, they're led uh, a lot of sophomores. They have a couple seniors inside post players in Lucas Garman, and the starter is, is Alex Akerd. Uh, the 6'9 guy inside. Those are really the only two seniors, I believe, on the roster. Then they go with a bunch of sophomores. They got a transfer from Webb, number two, Braden Hazelbaker, averaging 14 a game. Um, then you got, uh, of course, uh, Jonathan Woodley last year was all district point guard and started every game for Maryville last year is uh, just a great player. Uh, Drew Eldridge is a junior guard that will start for Maryville tonight. And then, of course, number 22, Eli Owensby, another sophomore, um, athletic and can do just a little bit of everything, as you guys will like his game. So Maryville, a little inexperienced as much as William Blunt is. Um, that's where William Blunt will probably have the advantage. But this, this Rebels team, uh, you know, the last two years they've gotten some reps for the young guys. Well, and I think really, Rob, you talked about it right there, the Hazel Baker, the transfer has really uh, yeah, been a difference maker in, in this team, this Maryville team right here. And, and, uh, so. he, he is a lights out shooter. I'm telling you, if your hand is down, the shot will go up and it's a quick release. He'll come off screens, he'll do it all. Um, but you cannot let him get going as he's had a couple 20 point outputs this year. Um, I went up and watched them at the Arby's Classic stand. They took on the number five ranked team uh, out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Emutep, and they were up 27 points on them. That just tells you how good this Maryville team can get it going. Yeah. Uh, they end up losing, though, in that game because of the guy that committed to UConn. But uh, still, this Rebels team has got a lot of firepower. Um, firepower. It's our old friend Jim Campbell. The great one over to the athletic director at Maryville High School, coach from that director for a long time, Jimmy Campbell. Used to always say, I worked with him, Robbie. Yeah. Did you, you work with him? Yeah, yeah we okay. did. Couple so, games. Uh, back a long time ago, we worked on radio only. He'd always use firepower. firepower. Not enough firepower, he'd say. So, a but, lot of firepower for the Maryville Lady, for the Maryville Rebels, and a lot, of course, firepower for William Blunt. Yeah. And Grady. Grady Robertson really got off the, uh, I mean, got going cooking the other night against Hardin Valley, Robbie. He scored 28. Yes, he did. Uh, he, he's, you know, averaging 20 a game. And we say, well, you know, but he had a couple games that weren't his normal. Which, so, I mean, he was still getting in double figures, but right. 10 and 11 and so forth. Yeah. But So finally, uh, the Heritage game, he started uh, showing a spark. And then there Tuesday night. So hopefully Grady will be up and running 
as uh, you know his brother's on the other side yeah. tonight. Uh, Lucas, I'm not sure how much playing time he'll get uh, as he's a sophomore from Maryville and he wears number 11 also. But yeah, uh, one addition for the William Blake Governors Tuesday night was Nick right. Hodge. Um, Nick is a transfer from Bearden and Park Valley via Bearden. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, both those schools in the last year. Um, but we're glad to have him. And he had five points fourth quarter, and uh, Coach Wendell uh, showed. Uh, yeah, some trust in him. Yeah, you, he's got to work his way in. You know, he can't just come in and play. You know, I'm, I'm sure he's not really in great basketball shape just anyway. And then learning the offense and so forth. So it's going to take a while to, to transition him in. But he will give them minutes off the bench. Stan, one thing about the crowd. Last year, it was packed house. This one, there's still a little spots yeah, open up top. Yeah, it's still a pretty big crowd. This is the only it's game in town. Crowd. Yeah, but with the weather... With the weather, Robbie, I think uh, might be hurting a little bit. But here is your Lawn Butler starting lineup for Maryville: number two, Braden Hazelbaker; number four, Alex Aker; number 22, Eli Owensby; number 23, Jonathan Woodley; and number 24, Drew Eldridge. Thank you to the Lawn Butler of Knoxville for your sponsorship. They'll turn the lights off, and now the Governors. Coming in with a 17-3 record. State ranking number 11, just outside the top 10 when they came out last Monday. Number five, Brett Cortez. A little under the weather, but he's going to give it a go. Number four, Trevor Scarlett. Sharp shooting lefty. Number 12, Max Lipinski getting his first start in the Marvin L. Boring Gymnasium. Number 11, Grady G. Rob Robinson, and C. Dub Caden Wendell, head coach Kevin Wendell, assistants Jordan Tarver, Grant Reardon, and welcome back, head assistant Jordan Conley, who's been out with COVID this week. So, anywhere movers tip will be between Akert and Wendell. It'll be tipped into the hands of Hazel Baker. And William Blunt will go, looks like man-to-man. -man. Woodley has it. Guarded by Robertson. Cortez gets the switch. He's going to face guard Hazel Baker. Woodley shot block. Jump ball is going to be William Blunt ball. Good job on the defense. Good help. I yeah. think Lipinski is there and Grady on the back Grady, side. Yep. I don't know who gets credit there, but that, it, it was tied up. Good call by Weekly there on the baseline. Owensby will be the one getting the assignment of Caden Wendell tonight. He'll give up about three inches. Crowd still filing in, Robbie. Yep. Well, it's not even 7.30, so a little early. Working around the horn, Wendell gets good hedge there by Akerd. And oh. Cortez. A little bit of miscommunication yeah. on the outside there. I think Grady was trying to cut in, and the pass came a little early. Or not a little early, way early. Yeah. But Maryville, good job of Maryville, just way out in the passing lanes, forcing William Blunt at wide. Scarlett will, I think he's going to be the one trying to face guard Hazel Baker. Hazel Baker will attack. His shot up. Shot is good. 2 nothing. Braden Hazel Baker. Good job of using the floater. I kind of like it better the other way, I think. Uh, but I guess Woodley, you've got Cortez. Lipinski finds Scarlett. He'll use the ball screen. Picks up his dribble. And Lipinski pops out. He got him. He's got Grady on the block. Caden will try to back down Owensby. He's backing him down. Slips over to Lipinski. Layer. There it is. Oh. It. Too hard. Yep. Good luck. Just didn't finish it. Here comes Owens being in the front court. Shot up, no good. Backside board, Aker, no good. Rebound, Wendell. His first board of the game. He had 24 rebounds last Friday night. He's going to pull up for three. Bottom, make it. That's a party zone three ball. Brought to you by the Roll Arena. Off the dribble set, doesn't matter for Sea Dog. That's three. Aker guarded by Lipinski out at the three point line. Now they got a wide open look for Woodley. No good. Rebound, Wendell out of bounds, tipped. Off Akerd. It's 
Three to two, William Blunt. 548 left here in the opening quarter. William Blunt this year has gotten off the slow first quarter starts and had to battle back a lot of times. Wendell gets in there, 15 footer, no good, strong rebound, Grady. Go back up. Grady will put it up and in. Yep. Five to two, in favor of the Govs. Woodley will walk, walk it across. William Blunt man to man the whole first three minutes so far. Eldridge will take. Lay it over to Akard. And Owensby, clean look for three. In and out, no good. Could have been over the back, so they're going to just say out of bounds off of William Blunt. William Blunt will go zone here. Owensby will get it to, that's a shove. A shove by Hazel Baker, shove. Start it right in the back. That's how he got the ball. Woodley lay it up. No good. Wendell gets his third board. Over to Grady. Grady will attack. Woodley deflects it. Crossing over against Woodley. Trevor will try to turn the corner. Finds Lipinski. Out of Wendell. Wendell will use the ball screen. Lipinski catches it. Finds Cortez, but it's deflected and stolen by Aker. Hazel Baker into the front court. Skips it across. Clean look. Owensby. Off long. Rebound. Akerd. Akerd finds Elvers. He's a shooter. Yep. Can't give him a lot of space on the outside. Five to five. Elvers is going to pick up the foul right there as he crashes into Grady Robertson. Teams first. Of course, Elder just first. Lucas Henson checks in. 4.13 to go. He'll get Lipinski out. And then an offensive foul on Caden Wendell. Wow. I didn't see it. I looked away, so I can't comment on that. I did, too. Maribel loved the call. You'll remember this is a game that Wendell picked up two quick fouls last year, Robbie. No. Yeah, three. it was. Well, three, yeah, down here. It was at William Blunt. Yeah. So I'm saying he, had, he ended up having four, I think, in the first half. Going to get a hold. I believe that's going to be on the Elders. That'll be his second. It is. It is. So. We'll get Robertson into the game. Drew Eldridge is going to go out with two personal fouls early on. Right there. And Woodley's holding. Yeah. They get the Henson for three. Bottom. That's our second part. He's on three ball. Lucas Henson. You know what he brings to the table. Six, seven shooter. Hazel Baker, guarded by Scarlett, goes around his back. In traffic. It's nearly stolen by Robertson. Good call. Robertson did hit it out of bounds last. Yeah. It was William Blunt Faithful not happy with it, but I agree with it up here. And inside lob, stolen nearly. Uh, as Akerd wants the ball, now he's going to pop out and get a ball screen. Doesn't get it good. Well, Robertson fires a three. Way off. Scarlet boards it. Was it uh, Lucas Henson inside. Nice pass by Brett. Powers it up, but it's blocked by Akerd. Inside to Wendell. Now he pops out. Finds Cortez in the corner. Cortez thought about it. Tries to attack. He does. He spins. His shot is blocked. Finds Henson. Another one. Short. But Wendell boards it and scores it. And that could have been goaltending because he touched the rim. Yeah, he definitely Do did. not know why he would touch the rim there. He was going to try to dunk it back on the rebound. Hodge set to check in here for the Govs. Owensby. Kicks it, Robertson doesn't shoot this one. They double down on Akerd. Akerd will power it up. Oh, he didn't switch his pivot? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Looked like, yeah, it looked a little awkward. Board by Robertson. Left side, Trevor, shot up. Oh, too strong. That'd have been a dagger. 
That would have been a great start for the yeah. game. Not a Owens be shot. Oh, yeah, no not a dagger, but. Oh, I don't agree with that one right there now. Mm -hmm. I thought Grady got all ball on that one. I'm going to call a body foul because it looked like he was clean up top. Akerd will go to the line. I think this is his first trip tonight. It is. Thompson will check in for Hazel Baker. Nick Hodge in for William Blunt. And Henson out. Second free throw good. If you remember last year, Akerd sealed the game over here with some free throws. Yeah. As William Blunt has won four out of five against Maribel. But they did split last year. Hodge gets in, finds Cortez on the wing. Working it back around. Looks like Grady's going to attack, pull up jumper. Good. Good. Yep. Pure mid-range magician. He'll get it to go. 12-7. to Five-point lead for the Guzz. We're in white. Trevor in the passing lane. Good deflection right there. I like the way Grady's starting to cook, Robbie. Lipinski's set to check in. He'll check in for Scarlett. William Blunt going a little bigger. I think Owensby has it in the corner. Out to Thompson. Now to Robertson. He'll get a little mid-range jumper strong. No good. Rebound Caden. One and a half to play. Five-point lead for the white clad governors as Nick Hodge brings it with a left-hand bounce over the timeline. Working against the man-to-man -man of the Rebels. Oh, my oh, hot pass. Point blank turnover. Now some momentum here for the Rebels. Robertson gets in. Passes it to Woodley. Woodley into Acre, guarded by Wendell. Skips it across. Robertson sets his feet. Bottom. Good shot there by Robo. And it's 12 to 10 in favor of William Blunt with 50 seconds left. Low scoring, but good competitive game. Robertson gets to the elbow. He's pushed on. Finds Wendell coming off a screen. Bottom. We'll match your three with one of ours. Sita with his second one. It's another party zone three ball, and it's 15 10. Robertson into Aker, guarded by Lipinski. He's going to go to his left side, kick it out. Woodley shot open. Shot good. 10 seconds as Hodge has it. Nine, eight, seven. Gets a Cortez. He'll find Robertson. Comes off the screen. Three seconds, pull up three. Short. Tipped up. Wendell, no good. An extra score at the end of one. It's William Luck, 15. Maryville, 13. We'll take a 60 second break. Quarter for the Govs. Two point lead. Maryville in possession. It'll be Woodley over to Hazel Baker. Looks like the original starters back in for both. No, uh, uh, 32. Garmin is in for Acre. Good cut to the rim. Easy two for Robertson. There's a 
hand check call. We'll take it. Woodley's first, team's first. Wendell has it left side. Oh, Scarlet penetrates, cut off, recover. Good recover there by Hazel Baker. Lipinski's going to get a ball screen for Grady. Grady kicks it to Wendell. Back into Grady, nearly stolen by Lucas. Backing down. Will fade away, Grady in and out. Looked good. Yeah, it did. It was down and out. Here's Woodley all the way, shot contested and rebounded by Lipinski into the hands of Scarlett. Oh, oh my. Wow. Great. Oh man, loose ball, Woodley gets it. Hazel Baker cannot let him shoot. Hand down, man down. Like it doesn't give him any glimmer of light, guys. I'm telling you, it's going up. Well, I mean, they caught him in transition right there, Robbie. But we were there. We were in front of him, but we didn't put a hand up. Wendell kicks to Cortez. He's going to try to match it. No good. Here comes Robertson into the front court, guarded by Cortez. Will attack. Knocked out of bounds by Cortez. It'll stay with Maribel. Yep. Been a back and forth game so far. Two minutes into the second quarter. Garmin checked in for Hazel Baker. That's a miss. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. okay. It'll get overturned. That looked like it was definitely off of Wendell's arm. So we'll stay on this side of the floor. Oh, my. Wow. They just let a wide open shot go. And a turnover, a point blank turnover. Wendell catches. Bottom. That's his third three of the night, isn't it? Yep. That was deep. Owensby hand was in his face. Didn't matter. Second quarter three balls brought to you by Bowen Door. Oh, I'm sorry, Murphy Bobcat. Garmin kicks it out to Woodley. Woodley pull up shot. Strong rebound, tipped. Rebound window. He's got Cortez. Uh, ball tipped. Still got Into it. The hands to him. of Scarlett for three. Uh, Air ball that one. And that one just ripped out of his hands. They're going to call a foul, though. Uh, uh, how's that not a jump ball? Yeah, yeah. either. Uh, Oh, that's Grady's second. Yeah. Two, two tough calls against Grady. Last year's Caden in this game. Tonight has been Grady. The recipient of two bang bang calls that could have went the other way. Well, I think it should have just been a jump ball. Right. It was a jump ball before. Aker dumps it down. Owensby layup. Just standing around watching. First basket by Owensby. Wendell has it on the wing, kicks it across to Trevor. Trevor kicks to Lipinski. He thought about it. He kicks it up to Cortez. Had a window on it near the block. Get, get it, to yeah. clear it out. Little turnaround jumper. No good. Here comes Hazel Baker into the front court. He's got Jones over here for shooters. Offensive foul on Aker. Lipinski likes that call. Hodge and Henson checking in here for the Govs. They'll come in for Cortez and Robertson. Akers first, team second here in the second quarter. Hodge is going to bring it across. Finds Wendell. Ooh, almost. We'll use the screen from Lipinski. Kicks it over to Hodge. Thought about it. How's that? He landed on yeah. his shoulder. He and won. one, though. No. Good pass there by Nick Hodge. And what a finish by Caden. Robertson set to check back in. He will check back in. He'll come in for Scarlett. 
Wendell looking for the old-fashioned three-point play one from thing, the charity strap. One thing I've noticed, the rotations, you can stay a lot fresher with this one extra player, Brittany. Yes. Yeah. Since adding Nick. Wendell makes the free throw. That's an old-fashioned three-point play. He's got four now. It's a Murphy Bobcat three-point play. 15 first half points for Caden. Number 10, Will Jones in for Maryville. 14 points, excuse me. Owensby has it, guarded by Henson. Pull up shot, no good. Good job of rebounding there, Lucas. William Blunt with the one point lead in the ball. Caden with a heat check, in and out. Rebound, Akerd. And the Rebels have it into the front court with Woodley. Crosses over, gets into the paint, oh, lay it up. Too easy. Yeah. Used Akerd, went around him. Easy deuce. Oh, the quickness of Hodge yeah. is going to chase that ball down. Wow. There's a foul. It's two. Hazel no, they Baker didn't call that first, first one on him, did they? Should have been a second after he had that push off earlier. And Hodge so quick with the ball in his hands. Jackson Dabrowski will get his first action of the night. He'll come in for Lipinski. Robbie, that's a good point you made about the extra man in the rotation, as it does give William Blunt one extra sub. Yep. Yeah. Seems sure. like everybody's kind of fresh. Yeah, they should. That's yeah. what, that, yep. you, you can play harder in shorter spells. Wendell kicks it to Henson. Henson's going to power it up. No good. And Maryville with three minutes to go in the half. Woodley loses it. Stolen by Nebraska into the hands of Wendell. Eldridge might have fouled him. Wendell's going to pull up. Strong rebound Hodge. See if he can take Hazel Baker. He will. Spin, Ooh, spin, and spin in the paint. And then Hazel yeah. Baker picks up his second. What a move by the transfer. Oh, they called it. They called it on Jones. Oh, wow. That would have been two on Hazel Baker. But it, what a move there by Nick. He can tie this game up with two free throws. Early. That's the Maryville effect on that call. Hodge cans the first. He'll have one more. Tied up 22-22 here in the second. And gives William Blunt the lead. He's four for four on the year from the foul line for William Blunt. Grady, that's a cheap foul, sir. That's, that's his third. And now he's got to come out probably for the rest of the half. Not probably, certainly Definitely. for the rest of the half. Oh, man, I don't... I don't know if he... Re did you think he realized he didn't have three? Oh. No, he had to know. Uh, although, two of them, I really, like I say, could have not been. Yeah, but if he knows, he's got a place to play. Yeah, he usually does. Hazel Bay, they go under the screen. <laughs> Explain that one to me, guys. Anchor with the putback. Missed it. Thankfully, he missed it, but then we don't get the rebound. But it's not not the recipe you want. And then a turnover. Hazel Baker so quick. I thought that ball was going to get easily get by Henson, and out of nowhere come Hazel Baker. Eldridge has it. Doesn't shoot it. Now, Anchor inside to Woodley. Nice move. Yeah. Got Wendell in the air, just went underneath him to the other side of the rim for two. This is a real gut check time for William Blunt, Robbie. Yep. It, with, without Robertson. Grady. Got to see if you're able to get Wendell a touch on the block or an open three for Trevor. Wendell's going to kick it out to Dabrowski. Now to Henson, he's got Wendell inside. Just ripped out of his hands, this is gonna be a dunk. Nope, they're gonna call a foul. This will be on Dabrowski. Hustling back. Really a good hard foul by Dabrowski. Wasn't intentional, but make him make the free throws. Hodge and Lipinski set to check in here for the Govs. Robertson set to check in for the Rebels as he cans the first. He'll get Eldridge. 
Henson and Nebraska out. Owensby checks in here. Check in for Jones. Two for two from the line. Two possession game now. I believe this is William Blunt was up by five or seven, and now Maryville's been up by five. So. Yeah, I don't think they were up. I think it was five was the biggest lead. Almost another turnover. Cortez kicks it to Scarlett. Hodge will attack back to Trevor. Trevor will attack the baseline. Final Lipinski. Shot up, shot in. Devai. Putka Lipinski. Owens beat. Hands to Robertson. Robertson. To Hazelbaker. Inside to Aker. Aker. Shot up, shot in. That's a mismatch on the block. Yeah, not much Cortez can do there. He's strong inside, but he's kind of different. He got turned around. Yeah. Cortez yeah. got turned around. 20 seconds left in the quarter. 15 down as Hodge will go to Scarlett. Shot up, shot left. Rebound, Aker. A lot of time left when we shot that shot. Yeah, it felt like and a force. It was, and it was contested. Three seconds, two seconds. Owens be shot up. No, no good. And the shot after the buzzer is, buzzer is no good also. So your score, it's Marable 30, William Blunt 25. As we will have, I think we'll have the cheerleading squads and the dance teams performing here for your entertainment. Then we'll come back with stats with Stan. We'll take a two-minute break. Go ahead and bring us back at the halftime show, guys. Okay. Thank you, uh, Heartland Roofing, for our halftime sponsor. As William Blunt trails Maryville 30 to 25 here at the half in a very competitive first half game here. As William Blunt led early, Maryville took the lead about midway through the second quarter, and that's where we're at at the half, 30 to 25. Give Nate a call for all your roofing needs at Heartland Roofing. We'll move straight into stats with Stan. That brought to you, of course, by Tim Tifton Realty. Give Tim a call for any of your realty needs. 
as he's been in doing it a long time, Tim can take care of any of your needs. Here's your first half scoring for the Governors. Caden Wendell leads all scores with 14 points thus far. Uh, not a lot of, from the other. Grady Robertson has four. Those both came in the first quarter. Then he picked up his third foul in the second quarter. Of course, had to set out the last three minutes or so. Lucas Henson has a big three ball. He has three points. Max Lipinski with two points. And Nick Hodge with a couple of free throws for two points for William Blunt. That rounds out William Blunt's 25 points. Over on the Maryville side of it, they are led by uh, Braden Hazelbaker and Jonathan Woodley. They have seven each to lead their team. Ackard is added six. Luke Robertson with five. It's Grady's little brother. Also getting in on the scoring for Maryville, Drew Eldridge hit a three ball. And Eli Owensby with two points to round out the Maryville scoring. Maryville has 30, William Blunt at 25. We'll take another two minute break and we'll be back here on Gov Nation Network and Voice of Champions. Talk a little bit about that since we have any scores. Back at the halftime show here, Heartland okay. Roofing halftime show, brought to you by Heartland Roofing as William Blunt finds herself down five. And Carter, we don't really have a lot of scores, so let's just talk a little bit about college football. Of course, Michigan wins the national championship, beating Washington on Monday night. Nick Saban retires on. Wednesday, I believe, right? Uh, yes. Which yes. kind of... Sh it shocked everyone, really. Uh, really. I mean, even though he's 72 years old, you feel like... Yeah, you felt like he had another two or three years yeah. in him. So then, Bear, or then Alabama goes on a 48-hour... You know, we don't know who they contacted, who they didn't contact. We saw some guys get raises. Yeah. We don't know if Jimmy Sexton, the agent that represents pretty much everybody, was using that. But uh, regardless... It boils down, they hire a football coach today, and that's Callan DeBoer yeah. from Washington, who was runner-up. What yeah. are your thoughts on that? Um, I think considering what I had seen on message boards and uh, really just Twitter in general, because Twitter's full of, of gurus when it comes to <laughs> stuff like that, um, considering who was left on the board, I think that was a good hire for them. I know that they they uh, contacted Dan Lanning and Steve Sarkeesian. Neither of them wanted it, rightfully so, because Dan Lanning is going to have an easy path to the playoff in the Big Ten. And then Kel and then uh, Sarkeesian, they're coming to the SEC, and you're well, not following the GOAT. Yeah, you're right. And so you're right. And that's that's what it boils down to is following Nick Saban. Yeah. And, you know, you, those both of those situations are good. Because Dan Lanning, as you said, goes to Michigan 10. He's also got all the Nike money in the yeah. world he needs. Yeah. Tech, uh, Sarkeesian has all the oil money in the world in yeah. Texas that he needs. So why risk when you're probably going to make just as much money as Alabama's going to play? Because, I mean, Nick Saban is making close to $11 yeah. million. Dollars. Yeah. Dan, Same money with less stress. Yes. Dan Lanning's making 7.5 at Oregon. He's probably going to get a buck. 
Sarkeesian's yeah. going to get a bump. So, I mean, I kind of understand where those two guys turn it down. Now, I don't know if Norville turned it down. I don't know if he just got a raise. You know, he just got a raise at Florida State. Yeah. You know, he obviously they're not. Florida State's not happy with the ACC. You know, situation. No. Um, that'll be you know resolved in courts whenever they can get out of that. But with the 12 team playoff, that's got to help Florida State. Yeah, and it makes more sense in the decision to stay. Yeah. Because, I mean, Alabama, it's Alabama. They've been a blue chip for years. They're, I mean, they're a blue blood. They're a blue blood when well, it comes and, to. Well, here's the thing. If anybody's as old as I am and remembers when Mayor Bryant left, this is going to be the same or even more of a, of a intense situation because, you know, you're following a legend, and they're going to go through several coaches. I yeah. saw Steve Spurrier said today that whoever they hire, this is before DeBoer got the job, said whoever they hire is probably going to be there three years. Yeah. Well, and, uh, yeah, because I, I, even I, I, I'm going to disagree. Even with this guy's too good. Even with the college football playoff extending to 12, so after me, their first loss, they're going to be on the hot seat. You're, this guy's better than Nick Saban, Robbie. No, 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 no. Well, then but they're, he, they're he can be competitive. Be he can eight. be in that range. He's 124 and six, right? They don't want competitive. They want champions, Rob, and that's where he's going to fail. And that's what <laughs> I'm, not do saying, I don't, I'm not saying. I don't. I'm not saying he just had yeah. Washington. I'm not after, saying he's going to fail. A, what were they? What were he took over Washington? What were they? Four and eight. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Right. He's and 25 he and three, years. two right, years. Right. But this guy's, he's this got, guy's really good. He's got to recruit good, the SEC, But though. he doesn't know the SEC. He's, he's never recruited the SEC. So he'll have assistance. Yeah, well, I know. And he'll have the top of the line there. No, I agree. It's going to be hard. But I think if anybody's for the job, this is the guy that I think fits perfect. It was the best hire they could have made. Yeah. The great hire. I, I, I will say that. It was the best hire they, they could have made. And, and props to him for taking it because nobody wants to pass or right. come after Nick Saban. Right. William Blunt in possession, trailing by five here after the second quarter. A very good second quarter by the Rebels, hampered by Robertson in his foul trouble. Robertson. Lackert's going to pick up. The Pensky got the offensive rebound, yeah. Robbie. Yeah, yeah, good job of getting inside position. He'll go to the line for it. Earn a trip for two. Struggled from the line so far. They called it on Owensby. That's two. That's the Maryville effect. They've got two calls on two different people. Nothing but net for Lipinski. On the first, he'll have one more. He's got three points on the night. Make, Make it four. four. 27 to 30. 7.45 left here. Just starting the third quarter. And Timothy confirms that was the right call as Aker did not foul. Hazel Baker with a brick. Oh man, had a run out. tried to run before he got the ball. Wow. Here's a Eldridge dribble. And they'll reset with Woodley. 7.20 to go here in the third. Three point lead for the Rebels. They're wearing their red road uniforms tonight. Pull up 18 footer Woodley, easy money. Hodge already set to check in here for the Govs. We played a minute here in the third quarter. Wendell finds Scarlett. Over to Cortez. Goes to Robertson. Robertson will attack the baseline. Shot short. I believe it was deflected. Yeah, I think it was tipped. It's going to stay on this side. Good job by Max Lipinski to get in there and battle. I think Max may have knocked that out of bounds. We have going to get the call there. Hodge checks in for Cortez. Scarlett's going to inbound from the baseline. Scarlett will throw it to Woodley. Too athletic. Woodley, Woodley just plays for Maryville. Can't just throw it up to him. Just a clean drive oh, wow. to the basket. He misses. Wow. Yeah, That's uh, a break. Aker just cleared the whole lane. Trevor has to make this one. Strong. Rebound Lipinski. That's his third, I think, of, the, of this half. Wendell, backside board. Miss, Lipinski miss, and put in. There we go. Patting his stats. Two more for Lipinski. Rebound. Six points. Ties his career high now, right? Yeah. What he had last Friday night against Heritage. Inside Owensby. Shot up, shot deflected, I think. By Wendell. It's a block by Wendell. Here comes Grady into the front court. Finds Hodge. Back to Grady. Yeah. He's fouled by Owensby. 
Yeah, that's one of the easier calls. Yeah, Owens be third. Two shots coming from Grady. I believe it'll be three, three. shots He's behind the line. Yeah, good, good point. Yeah, he so uh, Chris held up three. So make these, and we're gonna be tied with 6:01 to left here in the third. Grady nails the first. Grady's up to 80% free throw shooter on the season. Really hit a lot the other night against Heritage, Robbie. Yes, he did. Him and uh, Caden both. Uh, they were, William Blunt was 24 or 25 from the line against Heritage, and most of that was Grady and Caden. Caden. And the other night, I think he made it all but one, maybe. He misses this nope. one. Got no, the shooter's row. row. Yep. We're tied. 32-32, 6-0-1. Left in the third. Woodley brings it across. He's got Hazel Baker on the side. Guarded by the man-to-man -man of William Blunt. To Eldridge. Now inside to Aker. Aker's going to go left side. Nope. Thought he's going to get to his left shoulder to pull up. Woodley in and in. Hand in his face. Doesn't matter. Good shot by Woodley. Woodley up to 11. Yes, sir. Grady pull up to match. No good. Tipped around. Aker grabs it. Woodley, this could be a heat check for him. Nope. Instead, Eldridge has it to Hazel Baker into Aker. They're going to double him. Good job, William Blunt, right there. No, he's going to the left side. He's got Owensby, though. He finds the shooter. Missed it. Eldridge in tall for a board. Inside of three William Blunt players, he's able to come down with the board. That's a coach's son. You can tell. Plays like that. Looks like Woodley's. Yeah, the intensity of the Rebels has picked up. Woodley's, Woodley's almost pushing holding, and holding. I mean, he's holding on Robertson before that. I don't know how. <laughs> no call there. Uh, Woodley will attack Hodge, pull up eight footer good. Six point lead, Rebels. They had a five point lead at the half, extended to six now. After William Blunt tied it up. Hodge strong on the three. No good. Rebound Eldridge. Hazelbaker will get into the front court. Pull up eight footer for him. Good. No, he didn't get the roll. Looks like Aker was on the back of Hodge. Wendell will board it. He'll go to Trevor. He will find Lipinski. I believe Aker pushed him out of bounds. Yep. That will be his second personal foul. Definitely this time. Three fouls on the Rebels, four minutes into the quarter. Cortez checks in for Lipinski. Great, great minutes right there for Lipinski. I believe Garman's going to come in for Aker. Inside pass, Wendell at the free throw line, guarded by Eldridge. Almost a turnover. A little sloppy. Grady working against Good Day there. Yep. Straight up. A uh, couple forces in a row. Here comes Woodley around his back. Hesitation dribble on Cortez. Finds Hazel Baker corner three. Short. He gets his own board though. Skips it across. One extra pass to Owensby. Go get Hodge with the block. His first. Teams first here in the second half. Quick 6-0 run here for the Rebels after William Blunt tied it up. Yeah. 32-32. It's now 38-32. A lot of that's Jonathan Woodley. Henson yeah. set to check in here for the Govs. Inside Garvin has it. He's going to hook, spin in the paint. Nope. Finds Owens beat. And he'll get the switch. Floater up. No good. Rebound Cortez. He's got Wendell to his right. He'll hand to Wendell. Eight, 18 footer good. Much needed bucket. Yep. Caden's first basket in the second half. 16 points now for him. Oh, no help. He's going to blow by. Woodley. Timeout, Maryville. Maryville timeout. This one is brought to you by Blevins Realty Group, making buyers and sellers happy. We'll take a 30 second break.
40 to 34. Maryville's done a good job of keeping this lead at six. Here's Hodge with it. Finds Cortez. Henson's checked in. He'll set the screen for Wendell. Now Hodge has it. Right side, uses the screen from Cortez, picks up his dribble, finds Wendell. Ball screen, doesn't use it, goes away from it. Wendell's going to find nobody. Hazelbaker's going to steal it. Hazelbaker off and running. Grady can't foul. He'll get an easy layup for Hazelbaker. Lead up to eight. Oh, hits him and shoot that one. Wendell Wendell's got held. hammered underneath. And one. They called it a no charge. Oh, did they really? Wow. It may have been, but yeah. he was held and on hammered. The, on the cross. Yeah. Yeah. They don't call that, but then they call the charge. That's called the Maryville effect. Hazel Baker attacks, kicks the shooter. L. Owensby, good. the largest lead of the game, 11 point. This time out going to be brought to you by Circulation Station. Relieving pain with technology. Get three free treatments when you mention you listen to the Voice of Champions AM 1470. Down 11 here now, and so it's going to be gut check time really for Blunt. Yeah. The last 10 minutes, Robbie. Yeah, largest lead of the game. Inside. Turnover. Turnover. I mean, that's not there. Hazel Baker for three. Oh, that was a, that was a dagger. Run out for Cortez. Cortez will take it. Shot. No good. Rebound. Wendell. Made it. mentioned in the pregame, Maryville did blow a big 27-point third-quarter lead over a team out of Pennsylvania. Hazelbaker, another one. So they have squandered a lead this year, but we'll see He's what really dictates made the his difference, I think, of this team, Hazelbaker. Wendell, Wendell shot no good. Hazelbaker attacking. He will find Robertson back to uh, hand down, man down. I don't understand. Yeah. I, 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 I thought we had one scouting report. Guys hit the ground. Yeah, they got to yeah. be something, guys. When they pull yeah. a guy out of the ground. Owensby is going to be the recipient of the foul. His fourth. Team's fourth. Woodley will check in for him. Final 28 seconds to go in this third quarter. Lipinski's checking in here for William Blunt. He'll check in for Henson. I like it. Put Lipinski in there if they're going to get rough. <laughs> yeah. Got to get it in. He'll catch. He will take it up. Draw a foul five. from that. Hazel Baker. His second. Lipinski two for two from the foul line tonight. We'll have two right here. Makes the first. Three. Career high, isn't it? Yes. Seven points. Career high, seven points. And doesn't get the roll. Rebound by Robertson and the Rebels. 
20 seconds as Woodley will walk it across. He will attack. Kicks it over to Robinson. Shot up. They can't miss from behind the arc right now, guys. And they're wide open. Yep. Well, you said it, Robbie. There's a steal. Time. Robertson at the buzzer. You missed that one. Your score at the end of three, Maryville 54, William Luck 37. Finds Woodley. He's got 15 points. He'll attack. Swinging around the horn. Thompson, he's a shooter. He'll get a clean look for three. They're going to hit the guide wire. Oh, we about tipped it in. Pretty sure that hit the wire. Robertson will attack. Lay it up. Lay it in. Got to press. They're not going to. Maybe not. I mean, I've seen Maribel turn the ball over like 20 times against Imhotep. When with the press. We're not as good a pressing team, but still. Trevor steals it. I thought his foot might have been out of bounds. They're not going to call it, though. Grady crosses over, loses it. Going to be stolen by It's going to be a turnover. Yep. And Lucas is loving it today. He's they were all on him there at the end of the third quarter. His teammates, knowing what a big game this is for him against his big brother. Scarlett just picks up the foul, his first. He's said in the act of shooting three. Yep. yep. Three shots for Hazel Baker. West gives Chris a pat on the back, says good call, keep him coming. He said, thank you, young son. Two for two so far for Braden. We'll have one more. 17 points. Give him 18, so him and Wendell have game high. And that's the difference, 18 points. Side to Wendell, lay it up, lay it in, good find, good play. But you got to get stops and rebounds. Yep. As we're moving closer to two minutes into this fourth quarter, Baker finds Hazel Baker. He'll find Aker, shuffle the speed. I don't think he, he said don't pass he it. He said don't pass that back to me there. Yeah. Because he's kind of moving Off. too fast. Yeah, he's, and he's away from the basket too far, right. I think. Yeah. Yeah, he's 100% right. Caden needs to make that. Oh, just stolen away on the pass. I thought he would shoot that. Robinson attacks. Throws it off to Thompson. Short. High for the board is Grady. Lucas is going to get Cam Caldwell with a, a cheap foul. Woodley. It is Lucas. 
They're not going to call anything on wood, but everybody's close. Henson in, so another shooter. So you got Hodge, Robertson, probably our best shooting lineup right here. Robertson attacks, pull up 15 footer, good. Brady's in double figures now with 11. Robertson, five and a half to go. Thompson thought about the three, shot up. No good, rebound Nick Hodge. He just gonna blow by. Oh nice, just left it short. Great move, Robbie. There's a steal, Wendell has it in the corner. Over to Robertson, inside two, no good, boards it. Aker jumps down on him, so it'll be a foul in the act of two. His third. So Brady at the line for two. He's three for three at the line tonight. Makes the first. Jones will check in for Thompson. Elders will check in for Robertson. So Maryville has freshman Will Jones, sophomore Woodley, sophomore Hazelbaker, junior Eldridge, and senior Akerd. Brady five for five from the line. And the lead's down to 12. Don't adios him yet. Woodley. Attacks, shot blocked. Nice block from behind. <coughs> Elders will attack now. Get it into Woodley. Woodley on the block. Over to Akerd. The shot is good. Timeout Timeout Maribel. 14 point lead. This timeout's going to be brought to you by Bonnerberger. Home of the two for nine dollar quarter pounders with cheese. We'll take a 30 second break. to play, 14 point deficit for the home team. Wendell brings it across, finds Robertson. Henson pops out, catches clean look for three, got it. Fourth quarter three ball is gonna be brought to you by Blunt Partnership, where business and education come together. That's only the second three of the second half, isn't it? That's the first three first. of the first oh, of the yeah. second half. Okay. Lucas is second of the night, though. Woodley will attack the baseline. Find Aker way outside his range. Not his. Backside board. That's all, be that's all fairable. Yep. Owensby will check back in. He's had to battle foul trouble all yep. night. He's playing. He comes back in with four. Which was kind of projected. I said that, you know, if Owensby, whoever had to guard Wendell yep. tonight, was going to probably get in foul trouble. Wendell has it up top to Henson. Now they step out this time. Looks like Eldridge. Looks, that's got to be on Eldridge. He's holding in the cut. And then he flopped and fell down. His third. Unless Caden grabbed on the other side where I couldn't see it, the camera might have a better angle. But from our side, you can definitely see Eldridge was holding him in the. Wendell going to try to back down on the baseline. Turn, shot up, shot in. Lead is down to nine. Going to press. Oh, almost to travel, wasn't it? He did travel again. Elders has it. We go to Aker. Trying to get, do a good job of trying to keep it out of Hazel Baker in Woodley's hands. That's a two-point bucket. Oh, they called it a three. Must have been on the orange line. I love that. It's a 
big bucket. Yeah, would like Chris had a two. That's what I thought. They are going to call a two. Yep. Yeah, Danny had a three for some reason. I haven't heard. Don't they realize that that messes me up <laughs> on my score sheet? Now we have a replay. I, I don't, I, yeah, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, six, it, it was uh, 61 if, if it was a two. Clearly a two. I'm saying, I'm saying I'm a replay. Now, our replay booth has said it was a two. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> Henson, 15 footer, good. Got a press. Be aggressive. Hornsby has it, crosses over. Picks up his dribble. Another Woodley. Will attack Henson. Won't shoot it. Crosses over. Gets into the paint. Lay it up. Block. Rebounded Hodge. Hodge will lay it over to Cortez. Back to Wendell. A lot of contact. No call. They're saying it was clean. Robertson finds Hodge in the corner. He'll attack. And Hazelbaker fouls him. That'll be the 14 foul. Non shooting. The third on Hazel Baker. Scarlett set to check in here. He will check in for Henson. Henson with some really good minutes there for the yeah. Govs. He's put the ball in the goal tonight. Cortez will find Wendell. He'll try to get a screen from Grady. Didn't get a good one. Now Nick has it in the corner. Will attack Hazel Baker. That's a tough two. In and out. No good. Eldridge has it. Wilkinson clock. Nine point deficit. Hazel Baker. Inside pass to Woodley. Woodley just missed the layup. Robertson boards it. Robertson needs to find a shooter. Got Scarlett. Got it! That's a big first shot for Trevor Scarlett to go down. Takes the lead down to six with 148 to go. This timeout will be brought to you by Trinity Chiropractor where you get your life forces switched on with Dr. Evan Butcher. All right, we're back here. A minute 48 to go. William Blunt still has fouls to give. Owens B finally gets it into Hazel Baker. And to trap him. They will trap him. And it's stolen by Cortez. Ah, he re-steals it. Here comes Elbridge. He will find Owens B. They're not going to shoot it. Nah, they're going to try to milk it. They're going to try to William get a William Blunt's got a lot of fouls to give. There's one right there by Cortez. And it, it looked pleasant for Owens because he might have got dead legged. Cortez is first. Only the second William won. So they got still got two more to give Robbie with about 27 to go. Yeah, keep trapping to try to get the turnovers. Inside of Acord. Nearly stolen. Owens B. Probably not the shot they should have took, but Akerd right there. Strong take by Hodge, but it's blocked. 
Timeout, Maryville. This timeout brought to you by South Park Storage and Penske Truck Rentals at the end of William Hunt Drive at 411 South. We will keep it here as we have 110 left. William Blunt trailing by eight with the ball. Two fouls to give if there is a jump ball to go to William Blunt. It's pretty much desperation time. Yeah, Robbie, but I like the fight back in this. They were down 17 at the end of third. Yeah, 18 at one point yeah. in the fourth. And so, so uh, they had it for six. They got the shot right there, but Aker there to clean up. Yeah. So big underneath. Yeah, 6'9 six, is 6'9, six, guys. Without a doubt. So a minute 10, the Gov's not out of this one, but you're going to have to get some stops and some shots up quick. Reminds you, our next contest, our broadcast, I should say, will be next Friday night right here at the Marv as the West Rebels come to town. Tuesday will be at Beard, but not be canceled or postponed. Oh, boy, a turnover on the inbounds. As Cortez and Hodge weren't on the same page. Can't have that, Rob. I don't I don't get it. Way too many turnovers tonight. Easily breaking in the press this time. Now you gotta You gotta, wow, get you gotta foul. foul somebody. Yeah, you gotta get a foul. They're not fouling. You gotta, you gotta foul. You're, you're three fouls away from the bonus. Well, Maribel's doing a really good job yeah. though with the yeah. ball. But there, there it is. is. Nick Hodge picks up his second. So, 45. Still two to give. Aker gets it. Back to Owensby. There's one I think that was going to be on. Cortez, Brett's second. So you really want. Right here, Aker, let Aker catch. Now foul. And foul. Wendell foul. Wendell foul. He's only got two. Cortez picks up his third. So that sends Aker to the line for two. I don't know if they wanted to foul or not. The way they reacted. I don't think Wendell did. And he only has two fouls, Robbie. At this point, it wouldn't matter. Right. As Aker misses. But as so. soon as Aker touches it, you know, he's made some free throws in the past, but I take the percentages here. There's his first miss. He's two for three now. Getting the shooters back into the game. His Henson will check in. Yeah. People are starting to head out up the upper decks. Miss them both. Robertson has it. He's going to attack. A little shot up. And one. No, oh, couldn't get, get it roll. to go. But you make two here, then you try to get a quick steal in it. In a bucket. Well, the past two times they've passed it in, it's gone to Akerd on the press. You, you'd like to think as soon as he gets the ball here, you've got to foul. Foul him. That was Woodley's foul. Yeah. His second. Maribel is over the bonus now. It's Missed it. Rebound. He didn't get the board. Elders calls timeout. This timeout's going to be brought to you by East Tennessee Insurers, your local independent insurance agency. We'll take a 30-second break. Owens B. Roberts picks up his fourth. Wendell's not, Kevin Wendell's not happy, I don't think, with something. Yeah, he probably didn't want Woodley to touch right. him. Yeah, that's, that's probably didn't want Woodley fouled. I mean, he had to foul him. So anybody 
in the future. What's left in 30 seconds, we don't want Grady to foul, but seven point game. William Blunt's outscored Maryville 19 to nine in the fourth quarter. Another Manette. Woodley's not going to miss. Yeah, he's over 80% free throw shooter. Henson checks back in what? for Cortez. Robbie, I felt like his eight points in the third quarter it's were big. Huge. Once we tied it, yeah. oh, they were huge. Yeah. He hits both. This is the first two points he scored in the fourth. Inside pass to Henson. Up and in. Timeout, timeout William Lund. Quick timeout there brought to you by Blevins Realty Group, making buyers and sellers happy. 24.5 left, seven point deficit. Got to get, probably going to have to get a three ball or a turnover and a couple threes if you're going to pull this miracle out. Next Tuesday night, Stan, if the weather don't hit, William Blunt will be at Bearden. Uh, all these district games we mentioned are very, you know, very important for CD. Yeah, and, and here's the thing, Robbie. We talked about it on break. There's no breaks in the district. You don't get a game where you say, okay. You can you know, relax. Yeah, yeah, we can relax this because, and so that'll be a tough game. West, I don't want here, nobody to get offended by saying this, but last year we had Heritage. Yeah. They got, and their games were all around 20 points. Um, this year, you Maybe know, the girls do get a break. I think West girls. Right. But, on eight. And Owensby has it. A lot of time off the clock that, that time, so that should. I believe going to be Dabrowski, his second. So we'll see here. Two shots coming for Owensby. He has only five points tonight. Make it six. So yeah. Marables hit their free throws down the stretch. Matter of fact, other than the two that Ackert missed here earlier in this quarter, that's the only two misses of the game for Maribel. It's a sign of a good team. Yep. Well, misses that as you jinx him. Jinxed. Wendell into the front court. He's going to pull up for a deep one. Bottom! Did that get him over 20? Yes, 21. As I know, he's been at 20 in every game this year. Five-point deficit now as William Blunt calls timeout. That is a blunt partnership three ball where careers and education come together. And the timeout brought to you by Circulation Station. We'll take a 30 second break. Owensby has it. He will find Woodley. Woodley will throw it ahead to Eldridge. Nine seconds as Dabrowski will foul him. Dabrowski's did third. A good, did a good job of uh, running about five seconds off. So it's 7.3 to go. And this is the Blount County free throw champion. So yeah. I, I don't think we expected Drew to miss. Look at that. And there's the jinx, Robbie. Would I do that? <laughs> Offense, defense, Henson and Robertson back in. Seven seconds. You have to hope for a miss and get a quick three. Makes it. Hodge has it. Seven seconds, need a quick three. Hodge will attack. No adios. Time. There's the adios. Matters, I hate to do it. Your final score from Marvin Elboring. Maribel comes in and gets a sweep in varsity action. Boys Rebels win 67-61 and the Lady Rebels won 41-29. We'll take a couple minute break, come back with your stats with Stan. Two minute break.
All right, back here, post-game report brought to you by Heartland Roofing as Maryville Rebels win 67-61. Our Murphy Bobcat, player of the game, I'm going with Maximilian Lipinski. I agree with it. He a played, lot of rebounds. A lot of rebounds, a lot of uh, effort plays, scored well, hit his free throws. Uh, he asked me, hey, could I ever be player of the game? I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, Max, you could eventually if you, you, you ball well, out. Well, he, he earned it tonight. He earned I'm, it tonight. Yeah, I agree, Robbie, because I know he had five rebounds in the third quarter alone. Right. And so he had seven points tonight, his career high. So the, that'll bring us to Stats with Stan, brought to you by Tim Tipton Realty. Give Tim a call. Um, for any of your realty needs. William Blunt was led by Caden Wendell with 25 points on the night, so... Over 20 again, 14. Grady Robertson added 14 points for the Governors. Nobody else, actually, I started to say nobody else got in double figures. I'm going to say Lucas Hitz played a pretty good game. He had yeah. 10 points as well as he did get into double figures. Then after that, Mask, Max Lipinski, seven points. Trevor Scarlett's three points. And Nick Hodge had two points. And that's a 61 for the Governors. The Rebels too much. Braden Hazelbaker, 20 points for him. And then Jonathan Woodley, 17. So a couple of good-looking guards for Maryville, both sophomores, Robbie. Yeah. So, of course, Hazelbaker, the transfer. Uh, Ackard with 10 points, only other player in double figures for them. Eight points for Luke Robertson as he played well, another sophomore off the bench. Forced to play because of foul trouble. Owensby had it six. Eldridge was six to round out the Maryville scoring. So nobody really had six guys that scored, rare, uh, Robbie. They're not real deep, but right. uh, they're young, pretty young, other than Akers, the senior. But the rest of those guys out there, a lot of them are sophomores. And, uh, you know, they look pretty good. Final score, once again, Maryville 67, William Blunt 61. Maryville sets alone at 3-0 and in the district. William Blunt, uh, uh, one game behind them uh, with 2-1. and one. Yep. And Farragut West at 1-1. One and one. Bearden and Hardin Valley 0-2. I know Bearden and Fair get played tomorrow night, Robbie, or sometime tomorrow, yeah. and then West and Hardin Valley also play. And so, so we'll get an update there next Friday night as things yeah. will uh, – hopefully we'll get these games in with this weather. Uh, it gives us a break. I uh, don't know. Either way, Friday night is our plan to be here as the Govs will take on the West. Rebels should be uh, – real competitive boys game and hopefully our girls should get off the snide so with that thanks for all our sponsors thanks for our listeners tonight as Maribel Rebels win both varsity games tonight we'll see you guys next Friday night thanks for watching God bless <laughs>